Jen, so excited to see you. You've been on a mission the last five years, championing the need for well-being in organizations, championing the need for us to be open and talk about mental health challenges. What have you learned these years? What would you like to tell me? Oh, Nina, yeah, thanks, for, thanks for having me and lovely to see you too. Um, there have been so many. There have been so many learnings yeah. over the last five years. Maybe the maybe the first thing is a, is something very very personal, um, and that is when you are clear on your own sense of purpose, mm. it will take you to people and to places you could never ever imagine. Mm -hmm. And you know, Lena, I mean, I'm so clear on my purpose, which yeah. is about trying to create these workplaces all over the world where people feel that they genuinely have the choice yeah. to just ask for some help yeah. if they're having a mental ill health challenge. Yeah. And you know that that sense of purpose has taken me to people and to places I could never have imagined. And you know, when I left Unilever, I don't think I was, I wouldn't say I was, I'm a religious person, yeah. and I don't think I was very spiritual either. Yeah. But I can tell you, when you clear on a sense of purpose, there is something so spiritual. The universe, it conspires to put people, places, and opportunities in front of you that you could never have gone out and marketed for yourself. And so that's one being one of the biggest learnings for me, is just being clear on, I think it was Mark Twain who said, mm -hmm. the two most important days in your life, the day you were born and the day you find out why. Fabulous. So I think that's been the first big lesson for me. Yeah. I think the second lesson, the thing that I'm learning, is I'm beginning to see the conversation around well-being, health, mental health is shifting significantly. Mm -hmm. And it's shifting from why should we yeah. think about doing this or yeah. be engaged in this yeah. to what should we do. Fantastic. So I think that whole, we're seeing a whole shift in the narrative which yeah. is not why, yeah. but what should we be doing. And I think what I'm learning there, what I'm learning is that, imagine an employee value proposition, mm. an employee value proposition, mm. which says, well, come and work for Unilever mm. because we will enhance your life. Mm. Most workplaces that I go into today, you know, people's lives are diminished by work. Mm. And it's so sad. Because work gives you a sense of purpose. Yeah. Work gives you routine. Yeah. Work gives you the opportunity to build relationships with people. Yeah. You know, work can be so life-enhancing. Yeah. Yet, so many organizations out there today, people's yeah. lives are being diminished. Yeah. But what I am learning is that, is that organizations are beginning to wake up to this. Yeah. Organizations are beginning to realize that it's not just that people is the most important asset, but the energy of their people. Mm -hmm. The health and the energy of their people is their most important asset. Mm -hmm. That's their most important asset. And if you can have healthy, energized people, they will perform and move mountains. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I think part of the learning for me is, is, is how, do you get, how do we get business leaders mm -hmm. to, to, to have the will yeah. to want to commit to that. Yeah. And so I've learned the importance of being able to build a business case yeah. around this. I've learned the importance of being able to have some data at your fingertips yeah. to be able to build that case. Yeah. But I've also learned the importance of the kind of what I would call building the values driven and the emotional case yeah. to doing this stuff. And I think when you've got both yeah. of those, yeah. I think then you begin to have leaders who kind of say, okay, I want to engage and we want to do something about this. A couple of other learnings. Um, in my work, as it's becoming more and more global, I think here in the UK, we've seen a significant move amongst organizations to attend to the individual's well-being. But it plays out in a bit of a tick box exercise. So it's kind of, we're gonna run a well-being week, yeah. and 
then the other 51 weeks of the year we flog you to death. Yeah. <laughs> but guess what? We taught you about sleep. Yeah. And we taught you about nutrition during that week. Yeah. And I've always, since I've left Unilever, I've always wondered why has this well being stuff, why does it not really stick yeah. in an organization? Why is it not sticking? Yeah. And I'm learning that there are probably four reasons for that. Yeah. The first one is that the health, the energy of people is not a strategic priority in most organizations. And if it's not a strategic priority, it won't get the investment, mm. the attention, the measurement mm. that it deserves. Yeah. So that's the first thing that I've learned. The second thing that I'm learning is that in order to execute that strategic priority, yeah. This requires a significant change. Yeah. It requires a significant change in the organization. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there should be a change program mm -hmm. behind it. Yeah. So you know what? If we were going to, in Unilever, invest yeah. and enhance, so we thought yeah. that we need to enhance the efficiency yeah. across Unilever, key strategic priority, and we're going to put a new IT system yeah. in that's going to drive and enhance that efficiency, yeah. we would put a major change program behind implementing that new IT yeah. system. If we were going to look at Africa as a big growth market, which we already have in Unilever, but I mean, it would be a change program, and we would put a change program behind yeah. that. When it comes to well-being, we run a week called the Well-Being Week. Mm. So there's no change program yeah. that sits behind and supports well-being as a strategic priority. So that's the second thing I'm learning. Yeah. The third thing that I'm learning is that there are very few organizations out there, Dina, that have truly taken accountability to enhancing the health of their people. So we have billions and billions spent in health and safety. It all goes to safety. Imagine if we could take some of the health and safety budget and say, you know what, we're going to invest some of that in enhancing the health of our people. So we have got lots of organizational accountability around enhancing safety at work because there's legislation out there, yeah. Yeah. but there's no accountability from an organizational point of view to enhance the health of people, is my third big le learning. And the fourth learning for me, Dina, is there's no individual accountability mm. for people to maintain and look after their health as a driver of performance. Yeah. And let me tell you where some of these learnings are taking me to. Yes. Some of these learnings are taking me to a challenge to the HR community mm. around the world which says, could we change the performance management equation yeah. to be the following? Performance equals knowledge plus skills plus behavior plus experience mm -hmm. multiplied by energy. Yeah. Because if E is zero, is what is P? Zero. So what I would like to see organizations starting to do is to look at their whole performance management approach, the way they go about doing development conversations yeah. with people, yeah. and elevate energy to the same level of importance, if not more important, than knowledge, skills, behavior, and experience. And the reason why I think we can start doing that is because today we can measure people's energy through their well-being. So we've got individual, we, there's technology out there which allows people to do an individual assessment of their own well-being at a physical, emotional, mental, and purposeful state. So we can now measure it, and we know what it takes to have energy, is looking after all of those four elements. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, you as an organization can start building the resources to enhance so that people can draw on those resources as part of their development plan. Mm -hmm. But then we've also got individuals who've now got this kind of sense of where they're at and as part of their development and the conversation that they're having with their line manager in six months time yeah. is look what I've started doing to enhance my energy and my health in this organization. Fabulous. And so we begin to build a degree of individual accountability. I don't want the individual accountability to be I'm gonna fire you because you've got yeah. no energy yeah. or you're not healthy. But in this very demanding environment that we work in today, stressful, huge demands on people, what I'm learning is organizations, let's just get authentic about the fact that we put people under severe psychological and emotional stress. It's a reality. 
I don't put you at the top of a, of a crane without all the safety resources around you. So let's be authentic about the fact that there are demands in the workplace today. But let's put those resources around people mm -hmm. so that they can draw on those resources to stay safe psychologically and emotionally. But the big challenge then is, if the company has invested all those resources, individuals have got to use those. So I see some organizations out there today who've invested a huge amount of resource in trying to enhance people's physical, emotional, mental health. But you know what happens? You know what they say to me? They say, we've invested all the stuff, but nobody uses it. Nobody uses our EAP. Yeah. Nobody uses, nobody comes to our lecture on sleep. Yeah. And so, and so therefore, you, we've got to build this degree of individual accountability through saying, you know what, we care. Yeah. We care about you in this demanding workplace. We're putting these resources in place and part of your development is to use those so that you can maintain your energy and you can perform at your best. So that's at a very kind of what I would call conceptual level in terms of, of some of the stuff that I'm learning. I mean, the other things that I'm learning is just the power of leaders advocating, engaging, walking the talk on the stuff like they've done with safety, yeah. but doing the exact same for health. You know, I'm, I'm learning the importance of language yeah. and the sort of language that you want to use around this and what's right for your organization, what's right for your culture within your organization. So the kind of language you use here in the UK might be different to China yeah. or it might be different to India, particularly when we get to mental health and emotional health. And so I'm learning the importance of that. I'm learning the importance of role models and people telling their stories. It's so powerful when people tell their stories and then you still see that they're normal and they're okay and they're energized because of the stuff that they're doing. I'm learning how important it is to have the right kind of resources in place in an organization. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, for me, it, it boils down to, you know, there can be business cases around all of this stuff. There can be emotional cases. But I think what it actually boils down to is the real willingness, the real willingness of that senior leadership group to absolutely attend to enhancing the health and the energy of their people. Because when there's a will, there's a way. Intention. Absolutely. Purpose. Absolutely. The rule of and I just think that, that, you know, we know the business case to healthy, energized people. We know that they perform better. We know all those things. But it's a little bit like, and you'll know this better than I do, you know, you take the gender diversity debate and progress. When there's a will, there's a way. And I think I'm looking for that same sense of will now around the health and energy of people in organizations. And when, when leaders have feel that they, there's a real willingness to do something about and I suppose the final learning is it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. You know, there are elements of this strategy uh, and if it's a strategy, it'll take time. Yeah. It takes time. And small little steps along the way, building towards an organization and a workplace that enhances people's lives. Wow. I think that could be so, so differentiating. It's really inspiring, Jay. Eh? But I'm going to get personal. Yes. What do you do? For your incredible ah. energy. Okay. What's, so, so as the source of that, I'm sure you know. I mean, some you know people I know within Unilever, a fair number of people within Unilever know my story about how ill I got back in 2008, yeah. how I then lost my best friend to suicide, yeah. how that catalyzed me to go out into the world to try and break the stigma around mental ill health. But I suppose what I've learned in terms of therefore, if I'm going to be on that journey yeah. over the next 10, 15 years. There's still billions of people in workplaces all over the world Unhappy, who suffer in silence and can't put their hand up. And so I have to have energy to be able to do this. And so what am I learning? What I'm learning is that there are probably three or four things that have become absolutely central to every part of my day. Mm -hmm. The first is finding time. So I remember my days at Unilever back-to-back -back meetings. No time for Jeff McDonald. And I'm talking about, I'm not talking That's about right. 20 minutes for Jeff McDonald, but I'm talking every two hours, a five-minute recovery break. So 
you know, before I came to see you today, I've had meetings this morning, I made sure that there was half an hour between mm -hmm. seeing you and my last meeting, where I just sat and observed. I just sat and I was present. I wasn't on that phone. I wasn't on a laptop. So recovery and building recovery moments into my day, absolutely critical. And trying to find five, ten minutes every two hours. First big learning. The second big learning is how to manage this thing better. And the question I always ask myself is, does this manage me or do I manage it? That's the question I ask myself all the time. And so I'm learning to reconnect with people that are really important and relationships that are important. And so connection has become critical. Connection, I do have a sense of meaning. I do have a sense of meaningful values, but the, I'll tell you the areas that I've lost some connection. I had lost some connection with friends, certain aspects of the family and community. And I'm, I'm having to reconnect with some of those people. And the other thing that I think I've lost some connection to was nature. And so I make sure once a week I have the opportunity to really reconnect with nature. I jump on my mountain bike, I go for a ride in the mountains, and I just reconnect. And you know, there's a lovely book out there, um, Lena, it's called Lost Connections by Johan Hari. And what this guy says is yes. he says a lot of the depression and anxiety that we're seeing in the world amongst young people, amongst people like myself, yourself, he says we've lost our ability to connect. We've lost connection to a sense of meaning. That's why I think the work you guys are doing purpose. around purpose is so, so important. But we've lost connection to a sense of meaning. We've lost connection to meaningful values. You know, here we're talking about Donald Trump maybe winning again. I mean, what are people attracted to? What are those values that people have become attracted to? Where are those meaningful values of care, compassion, love, inclusivity? Where have they all gone? So we've lost connection to those. We've lost connection to community, friends, and family. We've lost connection to nature. And we've lost connection to a sense of hope for a better future. So connection is my second big, big um, thing that I'm trying to do to maintain my energy. The third is, although I'm not good at mindfulness, and I'm not good at meditation, and I'm not good at yoga, I do try and find moments during the course of the day to be mindful. So I'll walk into a meeting and I might be feeling stressed before I walk to a meeting. What I'll do is I'll just feel the soles of my feet on the floor. It's a mindfulness moment for me. And just be mindful. I'll get into a shower of the morning and I'll feel the water fall onto my body and just be in the moment and be mindful. And so trying to find mindfulness moments, yeah. really, really important. And then finally, Lena, finally, I have a sense of purpose. I have a sense of purpose. So, recovery, connection, mindfulness, and a real sense of purpose. By attending to all of those things, mm -hmm. that helps me to maintain my energy. And don't get me wrong, I do have my days yeah. where I feel really anxious. Mm -hmm. I sometimes have weeks where I still feel very anxious. But I've learned some skills, some ways of identifying some of that stuff that might be coming on and then majoring in some of what I, what I just said to you. There was a lovely little thing that I saw the other day. It was called Can Do. Oh. And, it, and it was a driver of energy. And what the Can Do st stood for, the C stood for connect. Wow. Just reconnect. Because that, that drives up your emotional health. Yeah. When you connect and you have good relationships, good for your emotional health. The A in can do stand for just be active. And I'm not saying you have to go and run a marathon, but just be active. Move. Move. Walk up the stairs. Walk down the stairs. But find time to be active. That's the A. Hug a few people. Well, here we come to the hug. The N, the N stands for just try and be nice to somebody and see what that does to your feelings, your emotions. I think it was Plato who said, Plato, he said, be kind to everybody you meet. You know why? Because we're all fighting a harder battle. Yeah. We're all fighting. 
So C is connect, A is be active, N is just try and be nice to somebody and see what that does. The D, discover. Be curious, learn. So good for your mental health, your cognitive ability. And the O stands for observe. Just take time out during the day to observe, to have some moment, to just sit and observe. Wow, it's a lovely formula. This is an absolutely stunning formula, and I've written it all down, Jeff. I'm going to keep this as part of my trajectory. Yeah. Try. I yeah. mean, but I mean, you've got lots of energy, and you know. <laughs> But one one last question. Yes. Yeah. What's your you know the journey you really went being on? We recognize this and you were instrumental in being one of the leaders who brought awareness to this whole issue and you started leading through it and you know, we've had success, we've had challenges. What's your advice? You see this from a distance, which is great. What's your advice? So how do we catalyze this journey further? How do we ensure well, look, we are ahead yeah. for What's well, I think I think my, the first bit of advice is is this is a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. um, I think piloting and testing aspects of it out in different parts of the organisation really, really important. Yeah. I mean, Unilever's global, so you've got different cultures out yeah. there. You you know, and people are going to move at a different pace yes. when it comes to um, some of the stuff. So when you get in there. It might just be that you are going to focus on the physical aspects of mm -hmm. people's health to start with, because that's like making sure that there are resources in the business in Uganda or in Kenya that enhance and help people to enhance their physical health. And then you might move to the emotional and to the mental stuff. You've already started doing a lot of stuff around purpose. So for me, and you know the, the, the little triangle because we used it for a long time in Unilever, but the energy triangle. And, and, and what I would be saying to your, your, your various countries out there. So I'd be saying, take that triangle and just map against that triangle. What, are you, what current resources are you providing to people to enhance their physical, their emotional, their mental, and have you done some work? And what would the future look like? So what could that future look like? Mm -hmm. And then what's your plan to go from point A through to point B? So it's a marathon, not a sprint. I think you've got a wonderful framework that you can map. And that for me then is, I think my advice then is make sure, Lena, that around the world you are seeing the countries beginning to invest resources in enhancing those aspects of the triangle, mm -hmm. right? And you should be asking those questions when you're traveling. So what resource have you brought to the business to enhance people's emotional health? What resource are you going to bring to the business what are you doing? And they'll answer the physical stuff for you easily. You know, we've got a gym. We've just signed up a thing with a gym, or we, you know, we've got a ride to work scheme or whatever. So you'll probably find the physical is good. Mm -hmm. I will, and then I think once you are feeling comfortable that the organisation has now invested in these resources, mm -hmm. I think the other thing to think about in that triangle is also is also is also the kind of you know, some of the policies and the systems and the processes, so it's the environment that might be causing, causing angst and trying to identify what some of those might be. Because mm. I often say, if the flower doesn't bloom, there's nothing wrong with the flower, mm. it's the environment that lives in. Mm. And so, you know, you've also got to think, I think we've got to think about just what might be just some of the systems, policies and processes that are causing stress and mm -hmm. angst mm -hmm. in the organisation. Yeah. And then I think once you feel comfortable that we have invested resources to enhance those aspects of people's well-being. I would then be saying, start building, and I think you're already beginning to think about doing this, is start building well-being into people's development plans. Yes, that's high for the agenda. And, and I think that, imagine in Unilever that you walk away with your development plan that's not just about a skill or a behavior, but I don't think you can do that yeah. until individuals feel that the organization has provided some resources mm -hmm. that I can draw on. So just like if I didn't have a negotiation skills, if I wasn't good at negotiation yeah. skills, you would send me on a negotiation skills course. So yeah. you'd invest it in a resource yeah. to enhance my skill. And I think the same applies to health. Mm -hmm. um, 
And, and you know, I wouldn't get too scientific about it. No. Uh, I think this is about having the conversations, but I do think it's about having it in the performance management ethos that as part of the development of our people in this business, energy is a key thing that we're going to develop, people's health. And so that forces line managers to actually have conversations with their people mm -hmm. about their health. And you know, people often say to me, they'll, they'll say to me, um, you know, we show a lot of care and a lot of support to our people. Mm -hmm. And I say, yes, when the person falls over. Mm -hmm. And then when the person's fallen over, we put all the support and care in place. And then the line manager says, I didn't know that we had an EAP. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that we had X, we had Y. And why? Because those line managers are never forced to have that conversation. But imagine in a development conversation, the line manager's going to have to know what are all the resources that the company offers. And is going to be saying to that person, hey, go and use some of those resources. Now, some people are saying to me, one of the biggest challenges that I get on this, Lena, is how can we ever start talking to people about their health? It's a personal thing. Who are you to tell me that I've put on weight? Yeah. Who are you to tell me that I'm not sleeping enough? Or whatever. Hey? And you know where I go with that? You know where I go with that? Yeah. The first thing is, I think we need to get explicit yeah. that the development and the performance of our people in this organization is about people's health as well as their skills. So just know that you have joined a company where energy and health is critical in your performance. Yeah. We should have a proper okay? skill assessment. Exactly. 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 So what? Potential assessment. Exactly. Perhaps. Exactly, right? So that's the first thing. But then the second thing that I say is today, Lena, there are so many organizations out there that are wanting to learn how to have a conversation with somebody about their emotional and mental health. They're wanting to learn what are the symptoms I see look out for in case somebody might be suffering from depression or anxiety. What do I say to that person? How do I have that conversation? Uh, uh, do I take them in, in, down to a coffee shop? And, and so we are asking people to become more alert and caring about people's emotional and mental health, but then why can't I have a conversation yeah. about your physical health? Yeah. Because you're not just mental or emotional, you're also physical. Yeah. And, so, and so that's why I think it is okay, because it's okay for us to have emotional and mental health conversations, so why would it not be okay if I thought, oh, there's lots of, I'm noticing bags under your eyes, you're putting on a lot of weight, your energy is snacking, it's impacting your performance, why would I not want to have a conversation with you to say, you know what, we as a company offer X, Y, Z, over the next six months I want to see you take that up, because yeah. I know that's going to make you more energized and you're going to perform better. Super, that was awe-inspiring. <laughs> Are we done, James? Incredible. Yeah. Are we done? Thank you.